Hello guys, welcome to the third module of this training. In this module, we will be actually starting with the Salesforce automation. We will be executing the five test cases. Yesterday we had seen how to use user extensions and all and other stuff inside Selenium, right? So today we will be uh, automating the test cases and using user extensions, we will be parameterizing them as well, fine. So uh, let's see how far we can go about, right? The first test I had implemented. The second test is we need to check the date and we will require the knowledge of regular expressions in this. That is after we log in into the application, whether this date over here is in the correct format or not, we need to validate that. So for that we can use regular expressions. I will take this test case later on, okay, but let me implement the third one first. Create lead. This is a simpler one. I'll take up regular expressions. Fine. But let me implement the third one. It is having a very simple functionality. Plus, in this, we will be seeing how to handle variable XPath using Selenium IDE. That is, uh, what, what will happen if the XPath varies and all, and, right? Okay, let's start. I'll open my IDE. Um, sorry, you open. Fine. So this was the login test, was the test which we did yeah, last time. I'll create a new test in the same suite and I will name my test as say create a lead test. Now what is creation of a lead? Whenever a customer calls in and he wants a particular product or service, the sales guy, he creates a new lead. He enters all the information about the customer and his company and what he actually wants, right? So this is the lead application, and uh, this, this is a CRM application. In this, I want to create a new lead. On this page, I have got three mandatory fields: CS, last name, com company name, and mostly the first name as well. Okay. So uh, let's record. Let's record this stuff. That is, I want to create a new lead. Right. Okay. So the first name I will give as say Tom, last name Hanks. Right. Company name is say Hollywood. Right. Lead status he he just contacted us, phone, some phone number, his email id at the rate gmail.com, fine. Now, um, I'm not going to fill all these fields because I don't want to really waste the time. I'll just print the description, okay. Customer wants insurance, something like that, okay. And I'm going to click on this save button. So as soon as I click on the save button, on the next page, the lead name is mentioned here, as well as on the left hand side over here. At two places, I get the lead name. If you look at the code which is generated, then this is the code. Fine. So let's do one thing. Let's delete this lead and run the code so that to check whether the lead is getting generated correctly or not. Okay. So I'll run this code. Fine, it is generated correctly. Everything went in green. Fine. Actually, I never <laughs> showed you the page. Okay, so why didn't it come over here? Okay, it also recorded the deletion of the part. I don't want to delete it. Fine. So let's run this again and let's see the page. Actually, I accidentally recorded the deletion part as well. So this is the thing. It got created, right? It's fine. Second test case is running fine. Now we want to introduce some assertions and verifications into it. Okay. The first thing is that 
I just delete this once more. The first thing is that when I go to create new lead page, the, my name should be displayed over here. Okay, my name is displayed out here as well as on the top. I just want that my name should be displayed out here at this particular location. Okay, so I will put a new line as I insert new command over here after clicking on the create new lead uh, link. I will give the command assert text. Assert text. This thing takes in the locator that is the X path and the pattern that is the text which you need to compare. Okay, That is I will give the X path of this element X path of this element that at this X path the name Ashish Thakur should be present. Fine. Now after this you need to check uh, after filling the form you need to actually put some assertions in the end whether the name Tom Hanks is displayed on the next page correctly or not. So if I double click on this assertion it is passing. I can execute a single line at a time. So this assertion is passing that means we are good. Let's run this code a little bit fast so that we reach the next page and on the next page I want to check whether Tom Hanks is displayed out here or here or at two locations. Right? Now there is a catch over here. Okay? There is a catch out here in this link. Okay? If I copy the text path and go to my notepad, okay, paste it and then I delete the lead and create it again suppose. I will delete this lead and I will run the code again, the script again to create the new lead. So a new lead will be created, Tom Hanks again, but the X path will vary now. So that's how the developer has made this link. That every time it loads, X path is same, but the ID of the X path is varying. Okay, so to handle such situations, that is the X path of the ID, it is not varying actually. It should because when I checked it out previously, it was different. Okay, let me do it once more. Uh, let me delete this. Uh, log out from the application, uh, close the browser, open the browser again because it changes. I have seen it changing. That's why I specifically took this example. And let's run the code again. Right, and let's see the X path of this. Now, here, here we go, it changes. Right, so it's not constant. You see that? There's a U in the end. Okay, out here also there was K in the end, there was S in the end, so it is changing. Right, but the thing is, certain part of X path is constant, and we, I am with experience after creating 3 4 leads i know that this part which i have highlighted remains constant right so how do we manage such situations some people think that they can use um, regular expressions inside xpass you should not use regular expressions inside xpass there are predefined javascript functions which you can use inside the xpass I, I have a link with me, this one, uh, this link over here, I will copy this link 
and I'll go there. Out here we have good information out how to handle variable x path inside Selenium. You have got lot of inbuilt JavaScript functions. One of them is starts with. We can tell Selenium that the x path is starting with, that is the ID of x path is starting with some letter, some pattern. Fine. So you can go here, out here I can write assert text, okay. So I have to give the x path. So how do I give the x path? I actually go and use the JavaScript function starts with. There are others as well, contains and all, everything. So how do I use it with this x path? I write over here, starts with bracket id, comma, this, and I'll eliminate the variable part and the bracket piece. So I have mentioned that the ID of this x path is starting with this word. Similarly, instead of starts with, there is a function called contains, which checks whether some part is present in the x path or not. You can go to that link. This is the location of that link. Okay, automation dot blogspot, and this is the link. Fine. So you can download it from the uh, the reference links which I have uploaded. Right. So you can copy this and go to IDE, place it in the target, give the value as the name of the lead. That is Tom. Thanks. Right? If I want to check this out right now, right now I have Tom Hanks over here and if I double click over here, this command will be executed and it's failing. Actual value Tom Hanks did not match Tom Hanks. Um, capital H. See that? It failed because I did not give capital H. Double Click and it is passing. Fine. So I have inserted this assertion. One more assertion which I will put is whether the name Tom Hanks again is present at this X path. Okay. I'll check out the X path for this location and it looks pretty good. It will not change. It's not got a big number or something in the ID which is coming. So whenever there is a big number or something or a string, a weird string in the ID which is coming, you should get a bit careful over there that the X path is going to change. Okay. So this is the test case which we have made right now. Okay. Now we have not parameterized it. That is, we have not read this test case data from the XML. We will be parameterizing it using the user extensions later on. Fine. Now let's run this test case again. I will delete the lead. Okay. Fine. So let's run this. It's running fine. And the lead is created and everything passes. Everything is good in the log. There is nothing red coming up. Fine. Now, we have implemented the create lead test. Okay. So after that, the test which comes up is create task. Now, this is a bit tricky because we have to handle pop-ups and we have to handle f attach files in this test. Alright. That is, I will save this test. Okay. I'll go to my ID and I'll write file save test suite. And I'll save my test suite as um, test underscore suite one dot one version. Okay, and save it. 
Okay. All right. This got saved. Then. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, one minute. I just change the name. Uh, I'll change the name to create task or create lead. Sorry. Okay. Now inside this, I'm gonna make one more test. That is file new test case. And in this test case, I will I'll go to the properties, give it the name uh, create task. Now this one will be a bit tricky because in this we have to go to create task need to enter some details on this page and we need to select the subject from a pop-up window. Okay? And along with that, we need to go down, we need to attach a file. When we click on this attach file button, a pop-up window opens. Inside this we have to browse for an attachment as well inside the pop-up and we need to attach the file inside the pop-up. Right? So let's see how to do this. Okay? So I will just record some basic things. That is, I will go into the recording mode. I will record clicking on create task. After that I will give the uh, Related to related to insurance, I'll write over here, and in the drop down I'll keep it opportunity. Fine, and I will name the con name is it's a lead, and who's the lead? Tom Hanks is the lead. I'm creating a task for from him. In comments, I will write um, need to contact customer. Okay, I just create this task, right? Additional information uh, status is in progress, priority is high, all right? And that's it. I'll record this much. Right, less rest of the part I will do it by inserting commands. Okay, now first thing comes subject. After that, the due date. Due date has to be selected from the calendar. Okay, the subject has to be selected from the pop up. Right, so now let's see the subject thing. Okay, now what happens if I record clicking on this and selecting the subject? Okay, let's see. I will record using IDE and I will click on this. A pop up will open and I will click on call. Fine. So this has recorded. Right? This has recorded something. But when I run this code, you see the log. Okay. I'll clear the log and I will run the code, run the script and some error has happened. Okay, so always remember for pop-up don't record and you will end up missing a thing. Okay. Just insert the new commands. Now what happens? How to handle pop-up? Pop-up window is a different window. Okay, it's a different IE window. You need to tell Selenium that fine, transfer the control from the main window to the pop-up window. Okay, and you can distinguish between the windows on the basis of titles of the windows on the basis of window ID. Selenium gives every window a particular window ID. Okay, but sometimes the window IDs they are constantly changing. The way the expats were changing constantly, right? Similarly, the sometimes the window ID it is constantly changing. Every time you open the pop-up, the window ID is different. So the safest way is to go with the title of the window. 
okay that is you can write first i will write the command click okay i will click on the uh, this image over here so i get the x path of this this is the x path right let's double click on this line to see whether it is executing or not see it is executing and i get an a message over here opening window blank which is not a real window name randomizing target to be this that means it is giving the window a random window id selenium underscore blank 2819 is a random window id last time the window id was this so i'm not going to actually distinguish my window or recognize my window on the basis of window id okay i will be recognizing it on the basis of title right but before that i will give the command wait for pop up okay that is wait for the pop up to load completely pop up window let it load completely after that i will give the command select window that is select the pop up window i will have to give the title of this window how will i get the title you can uh, get the title from the source of this window right click in this window go to the view page source and in the title you will have the title title is combo box fine this is the safest way to extract the title go to selenium id and select window target will be title equals to combo box fine and after selecting the combo box window the pop up window i need to click on this call right i need to click on this call so i'll have to get the x path of this uh, call link all right so i'll activate my firefox again and i'll click on this pop up okay so out here the firefox window is coming in pop up all right so i maximize i'll just increase the size of this pop up right now i'll go to the call link and i'll get the x path this is the x path now x path is starting from html that means the root of the html document so whenever the x path is starting from html while specifying like i'll have to give the first i'll have to give the command click okay then i'll have to give the x path and if the x path is starting from html i'll give a double slash right so that means i have selected the window combo box and i've clicked on a link in that window okay so let's run this and test this whole thing fine um uh, right let's run this from here okay now you can click on this and the script will start see it clicked on the link and it clicked on the call as well see the call subject is written over here right okay so it's working fine i'll execute it i'll execute it using ide again i'll and i'll execute it slowly right so let's run this so it goes there goes types insurance and all everything and clicks on the pop up pop up rises and selects call got it fine okay now after this i need to select due date from the main window right remember that out here i had transferred the control 
to the pop-up window. So after the pop-up has gone, I need to transfer the control back to my main window. Okay. So I'll again get the title of this main window. Um, the title of main window is this, right? And I'll give it over here. Select window. The title is main window title. Okay. And after that, I can continue to work normally. Now after that, I need to select the date. Okay. Now if I click on this, a calendar comes up. From that calendar, suppose I need to select 23rd of August. Now each and every element in this calendar will be having a unique X part. You see that? Each and every element is having a unique X part. The TD number and all is increasing. Fine? Right? So the TD number and all is increasing. Right? So you, you have to select the 16 over here. Suppose. So I will copy this X path. It's very simple. It pop -up, calendar is not a pop-up window. It's a normal, it's, it's, a, it's a part of the browser itself. So you can give the normal command, click on this. Okay. Now if I double click on this line, see the date 16th get and gets entered. Right. So this means that this line is also working. Now I need to go down and I need to attach a file. I need to click on this button of attaching the file. Right. So I will insert a new command called click and I will get the X path of this button. Right. And when I double click on this, a pop-up opens up. Now in this pop-up window, I need to browse for my file which I need to upload. Now there is smart work over here. Selenium cannot identify or cannot click on these elements because these are Windows based components. They are not web based. So I will be a little bit smart over here. I will directly enter the, expa, the, the path of the file into this input box and click on attach file button. Okay. Fine. So how will I enter the path? Suppose I have to upload this file uh, xyz.java. I get the path of this file. Copy the path. But before that, wait, before that, I'll have to give the command. Again, it's a pop-up. I'll have to give the command wait for wait for pop-up. How much time will it wait? It will wait for 30 seconds. The inherent waiting time is 30 seconds. Okay. And after waiting for pop-up, I will have to select the window. I'll give the command select window. Which window? Okay. The window with title equals to and the title of the pop-up. Okay. I'll go to the view page source, get the title. The title is attached file. So I, for some people ask me what if the window has got no title. Simply then ask the developer to give it a title. It's very bad thing that your window is not having a title. Okay. The title is attached file and after this you can continue forward. Now the control have will go on to this window. Okay. And in this window I will have to type the path into this input box. Right. So I give the command type and I will give the X path of this input box. This is the X path and the value. The value will be the path of the file which I am going to upload. This is the path is present on my desktop. On my desktop the file name is xyz.java. Fine. 
So I have given this command. So let and after that, what happens? Let's see. If I give the file name as if I browse for it manually and upload another file and I say attach the file then after some time the window comes up and I get a message that you have uploaded the following file that is upload is completed ok so I'll copy this text and I will give the command that wait for text. Okay, wait for the text. The value is this. You have just uploaded the following file. Add the target, the X path. Add this X path. Wait for the message. You have just uploaded the following file. Right? So let's run this test. Let's run this test with IDE and let's run it in a slow mode and check this out. I'll click on run. Maximize the browser. Fine. So it will enter all the details first then it will select the subject. It will select the subject from a pop-up, the subject is called, after that it should enter the due date and now it is entering the file name as well and ok, alright I did a mistake, I did a mistake mistake is that um, I need to click on this button after attaching the file I need to click on the attach file button right ok let me open my firebug and then click on this right I need to click on the attach file button this is the X path. Go to IDE, give the command, click this button, and after that, wait for the text that you have just uploaded the following file. Fine? Okay? Now, I just missed out something. In this, I guess, once more, I missed out the date thing. Mm, okay, let's run this. Let's run this first. It's again executing the same code. clear the logs ok yeah so it is executing now there was some problem earlier It's not selecting the date by mistake. I guess I deleted the date command. Right. Now it will open the pop up. And click on attach file after that. See, it's entered the path, but it's not clicked on the attach file button. Okay. In the log, if I see the error message, it says that the element not found. Now this is okay. I by mistake I gave the dog gave the dot in the end. Oh man. Okay. Now but I'll correct one more thing. I will after selecting the main window, I will give the type command. 
I will enter the date. Okay, I accidentally uh, deleted the date. You see that it takes time. With RC, this or web driver, this will not take time. This will be very easy, right? This from um, okay. I have to select the date. Suppose 17. I will write over here and give the command click. Okay, the command is still there. Okay, let's run this. Let's see why date is not getting selected. Okay, let's run this. Date is not coming, right? No, date is not coming. Okay. Okay. All right. So one thing, let's execute a little bit fast and let's concentrate on the pop-up window. Later on, we'll see why the date is not coming. Okay. We'll clear the logs and run the code a little bit fast. It is uploading and you get the text that you have just uploaded the file and in IDE you get this. You have just uploaded the following file and passing. Everything is fine. It says that um, this is the click is also successful. Mm. This line is actually getting executed, but it is not selecting the date. And what I will do is that you can just write this command over here. Wait for text present as well. Now what's the difference between wait for text present and wait for text? Now wait for text present will just check whether this text is present at this particular location or not. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's run it again and let's check out the date thing again. Okay, I'll run the code. I'll run the code again and check out the date. Go to home and from there I will run this. We have a problem with date. The pop-up is, the, both the pop-ups are working fine, but the date is again never got entered. Right? Oh, oh. Firefox crashed. Same thing. Okay. Mm. Right. Okay, I restored it. It restored the session. I'll go to IDE, open the test, 